Hi friends, welcome back. This is Santosh Kumar. So today we are going to start the gate problems. Till now the rules and regulations regarding the root locus we have completed. Last time we have seen one problem and in that problem I tried my best to cover all points. Okay. And uh, I think that problem is clear to you people. But let me tell you one thing. In the gate examination they are not going to ask the entire root locus diagram. What they will ask, they will ask one of the properties, whatever we have seen like uh, it may be centroid or a point of intersection with the imaginary axis, angle of asymptotes, okay, the breakpoints and all. So one of the rules they will ask, okay, in the gate examination. So today we will see a very important point related to the root locus and that is how to analyze the root locus for st system stability. You have given the root locus. Let me come over here. See, we have drawn this in the last class. This is the root locus given to you. Now, how we will deal with the system stability? Why we are going to do this all study for the stability only? So, over here, I'll analyze this graph and then we'll switch to the gate problems. Okay. So, friend, as you know, for the stability, we'll check the poles location of the poles in the S plane always right we discussed earlier if your poles are in you know this is the LHS or the negative real in the S plane they may have negative real and or in the LHS of the S plane system will be stable isn't it so this entire reason is for the stability if your poles are in RHS, your system will be unstable. This is 100% unstable, okay? And if your poles are lying on the imaginary axis, it will be marginally stable. Marginally stable system. Okay, so the same thing will be here only for the root locus. Now, let me tell you, wait a minute. Suppose you are looking for the root locus like this. Root locus means your poles are moving in this way. Means the roots of the given system. Okay. What about this system? Is this system will this system will be stable? Tell me one thing. This is Z1 at infinity, Z2 infinity. See, this branch are going in the RHS plane. So, this system will be unstable system. Definitely, over here at this point, can we calculate K value? Whatever K value is. Wait a minute. Let me change the color. See, if this is the, this, this particular one is the pole. So, this will starting at K equal to 0. The poles will always start at K equal to 0 and will terminate at k equal to infinity at 0 of the system. Correct? So, in between 0 to infinity, there will be some value for k. Below that value, the system is stable. Isn't it? Means from 0 to k, this is the 0. 0 to k, the system will be stable. Isn't it? After k, this k is greater than this value particular value let's take it a your system will become unstable so this is the conditional stability system in which your system stability depends on k value isn't it if k is greater than this your your system output will be in rhs your system will become uh, you know uh, unstable if k value is less than a in this reason your system is definitely stable system and in the stable system also we have variety of uh, you know things you know number one this, the in the stable system we have this zeta values also 0 to 1 zeta equal to 1 zeta is greater than 1 isn't it and 1 is zeta equal to 0 so for this particular point zeta equal to 0 isn't it in this reason this reason belongs to the zeta 0 to 1 or not. Why? Because this is the complex reason. And for the underdamped system, we got the poles that is complex only. 
means for the under dam system you will get the poles like this or better to write in general way that is jb for the under dam system you will always always get the poles like this so this is the reason wait a minute so this region is for under dam system isn't it this is zeta 0 to 1 if your root locus you know your two poles are meeting over here this is the break point at the break point two poles are meeting it means at this particular value zeta is equal to 1 critically dam system this shows the under dam system this shows the critically dam system and if your poles are coming like this like this like this so this is over dam system because we have seen for the over dam system your poles will lie on the imaginary sorry real axis only there is a no imaginary part or no repetition so if your poles are like this on the real axis means it representing the over dam system if your poles are moving like this it will be under dam system your, if your poles are meeting at the real axis so it will be critically dam system at the imaginary axis zeta equal to 0 this is marginally stable and beyond this your system will become unstable i think this point is clear to you now we'll switch to the gate problems so let's come to the first question and this is gate 2017 2 marks okay the open loop transfer function given this is the unity feedback system closed loop control system given whose open loop transfer function gshh is this now the question is for the closed loop system shown the root locus for k greater than 0 less than infinity means the k range is between 0 to infinity definitely yes because the root locus started from k equal to 0 and it ends at k equal to infinity okay the question is the root locus for this range intersect the imaginary axis at the rate k equal to 1.5 the value is given intersection value and the question is the closed loop system is stable for four options okay so first we will draw the root, root locus diagram so we'll get to know what is the condition but before that le let's find out the number of poles and zeros okay so poles equal to zero so if we'll solve this it will be 2 and 1 these are the poles now let's solve the zeros 2s plus 2 so it will be minus 1 plus minus j okay so these are the zeros and these are the poles now I'll take the s plane in which I'll find the RL branches okay okay perfectly fine now the poles are at 2 and 1 so here this is 1 here this is 2 and the zeros are in the LHS so here is the 0 and uh, here is the another 0 okay so for the common sense you can find out the answer this is the 2 marks question and hardly one minute question hardly one minute question see the poles are given over here definitely I'll get one break point definitely in between I'll get one break point now you have two poles and you have two zeros so these poles will go to the zeros now tell me how they will go they'll go like this or they'll go like this they'll go like this no definitely this will be like this because zeros are in LHS and poles are in RHS so the path of the pole will be like this now what they are saying in the question intersects the imaginary axis at k equal to 1.5 over here it's k given k equal to 1.5 given now for the system stability the k value is given so over here it's 1.5 and the the root locus started from k equal to 0 
and at zero the k equal to is always infinity means this value is going to increase 0 1 and 1.5 after 1.5 up to 0 you will get the k values greater than 1.5 or not k is greater than 1.5 if your system is in this range so I'm talking about this tell me you are in LHS what about this system is stable or not system is stable or not so for the k greater than 1.5 your system will be stable and in between 0 to 1.5 it will be definitely unstable isn't it let me change the pen if your k is greater than 1.5 means you will switch where yourself into the LHS once you will be in LHS your system will be stable ok in this range your system is unstable and k equal to 1.5 exactly your system is marginally stable that's it hardly one minute two marks this is about the root locus like this they will frame the question they will not ask the entire thing ok they will ask the general concept if you are you know conceptually strong in this immediately you can solve the root locus problems let's come to the second one second problem this is the gate 16 2 marks problem the open loop transfer function of a unity feedback system is given gs is unity feedback so hs is 1 k divided by s square plus 5 s plus 5 the value of k at break away point of the root locus plot is so break away point we need to calculate break away point and the question is not to calculate breakaway point the question is at breakaway point what is the value of k isn't it so uh, first we'll find out the breakaway point simply if gs is given i can frame the breakaway point equation that is in the form of k means i'll form the characteristic equation gs equal to 0 it will be a square plus 5s plus 5 plus k equal to 0 now dk by ds equal to 0 so this minus because of this k I'll take to the, that, that side and it will be 2s plus 5 so s equal to minus 2.5 so only break away point so definitely this will be valid only one you have ok now your point is breakaway point is 2.5 at s equal to 2.5 you you will get your breakaway point now they are asking wh what is the value of k so friend in the root look of the very first class we have seen the magnitude condition if the point is on the root locus it will satisfy the magnitude condition the magnitude of root locus will be always 1 if it satisfy the angle condition that is angle should be plus minus 180 degree or multiple of this means 2q plus 1 ok so I think uh, you know 60% chances to get question from these conditions only the first condition if your point is on the root locus it will satisfy the angle condition first if it satisfies the angle condition it means definitely the magnitude condition will be also satisfied ok so this is the root locus already they mentioned no need to check the angle condition ok now they are asking the k value so simply I will find out the magnitude at k equal to at s equal to minus 2.5 because they are asking the value of k at minus 2.5 so let's uh, find out the magnitude ok so the g s is k s square plus 5 s plus 5 so I have to take the magnitude of this at s equal to minus 2.5 and will equate that magnitude to 1 this is the condition of root locus ok so put the value of 2.5 first so it will be 2.5 square minus will become plus because of the I am squaring it 5 into 2.5 plus 5 isn't it and you have to take the mode of it equal to 1 so when you will get the value of this you will get k equal to plus minus 1.25 so
so the k value will be given always greater than 0 it is 1.25 this is your answer for this question okay friends so for today's lecture it's enough in the next lecture we'll solve some get, more get problems okay we'll meet in the next class till then take care and bye